And welcome to Focus on the Delaware Valley. I'm Laura Lewis, and with us today, from the Wilmington Children's Chorus, we have its Executive Director, Leanna McGurr, and its Artistic Director, Kimberly Doucette. And welcome, ladies. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us. We're happy to be here today. Uh, let's start off with the, uh, well, with the obvious question. What is the Wilmington Children's Chorus? Absolutely. The Wilmington Children's Chorus is actually the nation's only tuition-free community children's chorus, and it's right here in Delaware. We have over 400 choristers that we work with every year through a variety of programs, and our mission is to empower young people to change their world through music. Great mission statement. And you're you're coming up on a 20-year anniversary, aren't you? Let's talk about the history of the chorus now. We are. We were founded in 2002, and WCC has a really rich history rooted in the city of Wilmington. Um, We're very proud to serve children throughout the city of Wilmington and in the surrounding areas. And as you mentioned, we are coming up on our 20th anniversary season. Um, Next year, we are absolutely thrilled to celebrate 20 years of bringing music um, and hope and the sound and spirit of children's voices to the city of Wilmington and beyond. Who who is in a children's chorus? Who joins? And, uh, and, And let's talk about the process of it. Sure. Well, our performing choirs were where the Wilmington Children's Chorus began. And they're what you might think of as a traditional community children's chorus model, where we have children coming from over 40 different schools. Uh, and those kids are ages really 17, or, sorry, seven up through 18. Uh, so we start in those who finished second grade or coming to the end of second grade all the way through high school. Uh, and they really, they come from all over the city of Wilmington and the surrounding area. Kids who love to sing come and audition for one of our five different performing choirs of all different levels. Uh, So we can really meet kids where they are and give them the kind of music education that they need to continue to develop throughout their years of school. So the performing choirs, like I mentioned, were where the Wilmington Children's Course began back in 2002. Uh, But then we've developed and broadened our programming. Uh, One of the things that we noticed with our performing choirs is even though they are uniquely tuition free. Uh, Tuition and money isn't the only boundary to getting kids from all walks of life to join a choir program. Uh, There are issues like transportation uh, or just consistency of schedule that might be hard for families uh, in underserved communities. And we really wanted to make sure that our programming was reaching more children in the city of Wilmington uh, and the surrounding area. So we created our neighborhood choir program where we serve about 150 additional kids uh, in community centers and after school programs all over Newcastle County. Uh, And then we also, of course, have our summer camp programs, our own in-house summer camp that we do for a week, which will actually be coming up in June. Uh, So folks are welcome to register for that. Uh, And then we also serve other summer camps where we go out and provide instruction, again, to community centers uh, who are providing their own Uh, summer camps. Honestly, I'm embarrassed to say I hadn't thought about the barriers for a child who may have issues with housing or uh, parents who are working to be able to participate in something like this. Absolutely. That's a real challenge that we saw. Uh, And we are continually adding more supports to help bring those children through the program so that everyone can feel like they have access to our programming. There's, you know, the average cost of a music program in Delaware, even in the city of Wilmington, where we're located, can range from $500 to $2,500 every year. And for families with limited income, that expense is so far out of reach. Even for families um, who would classify themselves as middle income, if you have multiple children who are interested in music and want to learn, timesing that by two or three can be a real hardship, which is why it's so important important that the Wilmington Children's Chorus offers these services at no cost to children or families. Now, we talked about audition. When we're talking about the neighborhood uh, choruses, now, are they audition-based as well, or is that getting the benefits of music, whether or not you're ever going to be able to get up on a stage and do it well? Absolutely. Our neighborhood choir programs are not auditioned, so all of the students in the aftercare programs in those community centers and after-school programs 
uh, come and join us for our music classes. So all of them participate regardless uh, of their current level of experience. And then, of course, we offer them the opportunity to come and audition for our performing choirs. Uh, and that audition for the performing choirs is really more of a placement audition. We do have, like I said, many different levels in those performing choirs. So when you come, it sounds intimidating to audition for the performing choirs, but really we're very compassionate in that process. We work with kids to find their singing voices and see which level would be most appropriate for them. And then, like I mentioned, we have some incredibly advanced ensembles as well. So we go all the way from very beginning levels through the most advanced high schoolers. Does, does participation lead to university study or continuing your music studies afterwards? Do a lot of the kids go on and make professional careers out of performance? Uh, well, we have a mix. We have kids who go on to perform, certainly. Uh, we have a lot of kids who've gone on to be music educators, uh, choir directors, and some of those alumni are actually featured in our film as guests as well. Uh, so they're all over the country doing their musical things. But we also have you know, engineers, doctors, um, educators in all fields, lawyers, folks who are studying many different paths. Uh, and that's very exciting to see. But music has been a com component of their studies uh, for many of them. They've continued in college uh, onto advanced ensembles. So we've had kids singing uh, in elite ensembles at Notre Dame, uh, Franklin and Marshall, uh, certain University of the Arts right up here in Philadelphia, Berkeley School of Music. Uh, we have folks who've gone down to Texas. So there, our kids, our alumni are all over the country making music in many different ways and you know, changing our world through their various professions. Is this one of the only opportunities that for children to sing in Wilmington? Do schools still offer the opportunity to get to that level? Sure. There are a number of excellent music programs here in the schools in Delaware, but there are also a number of challenges to participation. Kids are becoming more uh, busy in school. Uh, they feel like they need to get more and more AP classes. Uh, so they're becoming overloaded in their schedules and kids may not be able to participate in those ensembles if they do exist in their schools. Uh, and of course, we have seen some schools where they may have a music program, but it has suffered for lack of support. And I think COVID has really only exacerbated these challenges. We saw, unfortunately, many schools have to make very hard choices in the transition to virtual and hybrid learning. Um, and some of them chose to make their music classes asynchronous. So those students were never getting face-to-face -face times with their music teacher um, or cut it all together, uh, which was really a shame and a disservice to the kids who need music in their lives now more than ever. Why? Why? Why should a kid participate? What do kids get out of choir and, and chorus singing, group participation and all of that? What, what do you see the children develop that participate in programs like this? Well, I think Leanna might be a great person to answer that because Leanna actually came through our program. Absolutely. Yeah. So I joined the Wilmington Children's Chorus in 2007. I believe I was in eighth grade. Um, and I always love to tell the story of my first performance with the Wilmington Children's Chorus was at a rally for then Senator Barack Obama in Rodney Square during that election cycle. And I was so nervous. I was petrified. It was the biggest audience I've ever sung for, but it was a wonderful experience, um, as was my entire experience with the Wilmington Children's Chorus. Um, I learned so much about music, obviously. Um, but I also learned a really deep appreciation for other languages and cultures. I got to know um, children through the Wilmington Children's Chorus that I would never meet otherwise. Uh, we have such segregated schools and society these days. And I think that the tendency is to stay in your bubble or your silo um, and not kind of reach beyond those cultural boundaries. So I got to make friends with people that I otherwise never would have met, uh, lifelong friends. I also 
learned about leadership and teamwork, um, caring for my community, uh, investing in helping others and supporting others. And then I got that same, you know, help and support back. It's so much more than um, learning about music and uh, singing and performance. Those are wonderful elements, but the skills, uh, leadership, teamwork, grit, community care, uh, all of those things stay with me and they've stayed with my peers who came through the program with me um, as we go into fields of nonprofit, uh, healthcare, education, uh, science and engineering. We really kind of run the gamut and the skills that we learned at choir benefit us far into our lives and our professional careers. All those life skills, of course, are the things that you hear a coach talk about, uh, leadership and teamwork and, and dedication. But now the, the culture and language, you tackle some really uh, difficult works, classical music. Uh, what other kind of world music do you handle or, or talk about what you perform? Well, it's been quite some time since we've actually calculated the number of languages that we've sung in, and I'm sure we've added some, but we went back uh, many years ago to look through our repertoire, uh, and we had over 30 different languages represented. Uh, Most recently, we did a concert focusing on the music of sub-Saharan Africa, which was really uh, a crowd favorite because a lot of that music involves movement and percussion, so our kids got to experience something wholly unique. Uh, Of course, we do very high classical music. Uh, We are looking forward to a performance of The Planets with the Delaware Symphony Orchestra. Uh, That's The Planets by Gustav Holst. Uh, So that is incredibly difficult music. Uh, And we've performed in a number of operas as well with Opera Delaware. Uh, But we perform music from all over the world uh, and many different cultures. Uh, We also do a little bit of like popular music and jazz. So our kids really get to experience the full gamut of choral music. As the artistic director, do you look at the year and think, well, they are going to master this this year. Oh, and we're going to throw this in and we're going to, and this is always a crowd pleaser. But then do the kids ever come up with something that they wish to perform? Do they get a kid's choice? Sure, we certainly take their input. Uh, And the more experienced kids really have a great understanding of what works for their voices. uh, And they have a a wide interest in music. So we've been really lucky to have kids who have great insight into their ability. uh, And we love taking their suggestions. Uh, Hey, if you're just joining us, this is Focus on the Delaware Valley. I'm Laura Lewis, and with us today, we are speaking to the Wilmington Children's Chorus. And you can find them at WilmingtonChildrensChorus.com. Org. That's WilmingtonChildrensChorus.org. On social media, look for them there as well. That always gives you the most up-to-date information and all the fun facts. Uh, with us today, the Executive Director, Leanna McGurr, and Kimberly Doucette. She is the Artistic Director. Again, go to WilmingtonChildrensChorus.org for more information. And if I am a parent or I am a teacher and I know that you have these community choruses, etc., uh, do I reach out to you? When When is the audition process? When do, when do you start filling the ranks? We have auditions every September and January, kind of early on in the month. Uh, so that would be a great time, maybe the beginning or middle of August to check our website uh, and then the end of December for those audition dates. Uh, and there's always contact information information on our website, of course, on social media as well. Our families and our choristers are our greatest spreader of our audition information. They really share that throughout the community uh, and talk up the opportunity. So we're always looking for new members. And summer camp is also a great way to join. We have our annual summer camp coming up uh, June 21st to June 25th. Uh, And that's for ages 7 through 13, or those who've completed second grade through eighth grade. Uh, And that's a great way to get introduced to the Wilmington Children's Chorus. We also, for those campers, hold auditions at the end of summer camp, so they don't need to worry about coming back in September to audition at that time. What's the time commitment for a child once they enter the program? Our performing choirs, uh, it depends really what level of choir they're in. Uh, And things have been a little bit different during COVID. uh, But our normal schedule is that uh, our more beginning ensembles rehearse once a week. 
Uh, and the more advanced you get, uh, there are now two rehearsals that are a little bit more extended in length. Uh, and then we also, of course, in those more advanced ensembles, expect some individual practice uh, to work on those skills and build their music learning and making sure they're memorized in their music. So there's more of a commitment to do some of that work at home as well. And our neighborhood choir programs uh, are a little bit less intensive in the work that's expected outside of the classroom, but uh, they do receive a once a week, 30, 30 minute to 45 minute class uh, in each of those sites. And that goes throughout the school year. Where where do we see that the chorus is performing? We perform all over the city. We have a number of partnerships. Uh, we actually work with the Delaware Symphony Orchestra, Opera Delaware, Delaware Choral Arts, uh, and a number of other organizations here in the city where we have collaborations and perform alongside those most excellent arts organizations here that we're lucky to have in Delaware. Uh, but when we perform, we tend to partner with different churches here in Wilmington. Uh, we perform acoustically for the most part, so without microphones or amplification of any kind. Uh, and churches have just the best kind of acoustic for young voices. Uh, and really, we have a number of great partners at First and Central Presbyterian Church, uh, at the Episcopal Church of St. Andrew and Matthew, where actually that was where the children's chorus was born, uh, and Aldersgate uh, Methodist Church up on 202. Uh, we're also starting to develop a bit of a partnership down with how Howard High School that has just recently renovated their beautiful auditorium that has great acoustics. And that's where we'll be doing our premiere of our movie. And, and you travel extensively, I would guess, in the region to perform, right? We do tour throughout the region. We go down to uh, the beach area almost every holiday season. Uh, and we've worked in Philadelphia and in Maryland as well. And this is an international touring group, isn't it? Yes, yes, we tour uh, Every four years, we go uh, to visit a German youth orchestra. We actually have a partnership with the Fulda Youth Orchestra from our sister city of Fulda, Germany. Uh, and we visit them every four years. Uh, and then on the other two-year increments, they come to Wilmington. So every two years, we have a cultural exchange with this orchestra where either they are coming to visit our choirs in Wilmington or we are going to visit them in Germany. Uh, and then we usually go on to have an extension where we tour. Um, last time we went around to different cities in Germany, but we have been to Paris and Namur, which is another sister city in France. Uh, and we've also been uh, to Prague in the Czech Republic. Since we've alluded to it, let's discuss COVID. How did it impact your organization? And uh, I'm going to guess that with your partnerships with the other institutions in the region, the, the arts took a major hit this year. They really did. This past year has been a true test and trial for arts and cultural organizations in Delaware and across the nation. I think by our nature, we are community gathering events. Uh, not only is it how we, you know, perform our craft or showcase our work, uh, but it is also how many arts organizations make their money. Uh, and eliminating audience gathering or eliminating the ability to gather your performers uh, and make art together has really had a tremendous impact, I think, not just financially, but also on the morale of arts and culture organizations. We've connected with all of our arts and culture partners over the past year um, just to see how they're doing and to see how we can support one another. And I think the common theme that I hear from everyone is we're getting through it. We're going to be creative. We're going to adapt and do the best that we can. Um, but we're all looking for this light at the end of the tunnel here. And it certainly had a tremendous impact on the Wilmington Children's Chorus um, financially, of course. We weren't able able to hold uh, two of our planned concerts uh, in addition to uh, another collaboration we planned with the Delaware Symphony Orchestra being interrupted. But it's also, I mean, it's really had an impact on how we're able to do our work. We had to reinvent decades of programming essentially overnight. I think we took maybe two weeks to do it. Um, it, was, it was quite a challenge. And obviously our top priority has been keeping our choristers and their families safe and healthy and keeping our staff safe safe and healthy as well. 
but we recognize that part of keeping ourselves healthy is keeping ourselves mentally well and making sure that children during this time of extreme isolation uh, have opportunities to express themselves and express their emotions um, and connect with their communities. I think that is essentially important as we focus on keeping ourselves physically healthy, that we also talk about ways to keep our community healthy as well. I I know the CDC and all the health officials were talking about that uh, group singing was going to be one of the last things that we could come back to do. What's, uh, What's the schedule and plan for return to live performances? Yeah, I think it was about this time last year, we definitely saw a panic in the media about singing uh, and transmission of COVID. And luckily, we've learned a lot since then. We've learned that the things that keep us safe everywhere else keep us safe while we're singing. So distancing, masking, um, using a well-fitting mask is really important. Uh, ventilation, air exchange in the room um, or being outside helps so much. Regular cleaning and sanitizing, uh, all of these things, they keep us safe in the grocery store, they keep us safe at school and in our workplaces, and they keep us safe during group singing as well. So I'm glad that science uh, and the research has caught up to what we all know to be true. And luckily, the Wilmington Children's Chorus knew um, very early on that these were the things that we could do to keep our community safe. So we started in-person singing again in July of 2020. And we were actually one of the first singing-based organizations to resume in-person instruction in the entire state of Delaware. And the reason we did that is because our choristers needed it. Our children needed opportunities to connect with their community, to see their friends, and to make art together uh, and work through this incredibly difficult time. So we have been uh, partly in person and partly virtual for the past year, essentially. And it's certainly a challenge, but it's one we've adapted to. Last Tuesday was our last virtual rehearsal of the spring season. And it was wonderful to be able to reflect with the kids on all that we've accomplished. In this past year, we've done, I think, over 100 virtual and in-person rehearsals. Uh, We've created an entire documentary film. We produced a whole virtual holiday series, which was accessed more than 30,000 times. Uh, It's really been a a remarkable effort, and we're so proud of the really hard work of our choristers. 30,000, that's amazing. Uh, But how do we interact with you? How do we get to see your performances, and how do we see the documentary? Tell us about that. Absolutely. We use social media a ton, so if you're interested in keeping up with everything that's going on with the Wilmington Children's Chorus, and there is so much, we really recommend that you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. That's the best way to keep up with everything that we're doing. Uh, And we do have a documentary coming out on Saturday, May 22nd. The documentary is called And Still We Sing. If you're interested in viewing information, you can find that on our website at WilmingtonChildrensChorus.org. You can also find all of this information on Facebook and Instagram. Tell me about the documentary. How did that get started and, and what does it cover? What's it about? Sure. I should also mention too that you should visit our YouTube page. Uh, So our YouTube page is really the collection of all of our videos that we have produced, not only during this time of COVID, but a lot of past performances and excerpts as well. So you can get a a sense of what we've been doing over the past year and go back all the way through the history of the Wilmington Children's Chorus on our YouTube page. Again, just search for the Wilmington Children's Chorus and you'll find us on YouTube. All right. So what is, and still we sing, I'm guessing that this is, is this a documentary about your efforts and and keeping singing alive in in Wilmington? Yes. And it's really a documentary that focuses on our young people's response to the twin pandemics of COVID-19 and racism. Uh, So of course we saw through the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, incredible knowledge and understanding uh, coming through that movement to uh, help us reframe our understanding of the true impact of racism uh, and the true horrors of racism in our country. Uh, And our young people uh, have been just as affected by that as they have by the isolation uh, and fear that they have around COVID-19. So really this film is their way of healing 
uh, through that process of creating art. So healing and then also moving us forward to it towards a better future. Uh, so our instead of our spring concert that we would normally do, our young people have put together this documentary film that involves really three different things. You'll see uh, live recordings that we did uh, with our kids socially distanced and masked, uh, and we recorded musical selections from each ensemble uh, and filmed those. So you get to see uh, some choral music of us all singing together. We also have very creative artworks that our children have created. Uh, so a 30 of our young people submitted original poems, songs, and art to contribute to this film. Uh, and they're very powerful uh, when you see their individual responses to this time and how they want to see our future reshaped because of it. Uh, and then the third element is visits from community artists and community activists who share some of the work that they're doing here in Wilmington. Uh, and they were actually artists and activists who came and spoke with our kids on Zoom. So all of our choristers got to meet and interact with these artists, learn a little bit about what's going on in the art scene in Wilmington uh, and the change that folks are looking to see right here in our community, learn about that firsthand. Uh, and then and we'll see guest appearances from those folks in the in the film as well. Did they shoot and edit uh, and work on this themselves? I know you do have a, um, a, a producer right now working on it. Right. Uh, our kids who did their individual artworks actually did film them themselves. So they created the art and filmed their segment. And that then is being edited by our cinematographer. Uh, but the actual choral selections, since our children were singing in them, uh, and then, of course, the guest artists uh, were filmed by our, uh, by our partner, Elias Muhammad, who works at Advocate Media. And how do we see the documentary now? Is this going to be in a theater or will this be a special download? How will we do this? So we will have both a live in-person premiere and a live live stream of the event on May 22nd. It will be at 7 p.m. And you can purchase tickets to come join us in person at the theater uh, where you will have an opportunity to see our talent, our choristers who are in the film, walk the red carpet in their red carpet best um, and join us for the in-person uh, world premiere of this film, or you can join us virtually and watch on the live stream, which will be available starting at seven o'clock on May 22nd for 24 hours. So even if you're not able to sit down on your couch at seven o'clock and watch it with us, you can access it for 24 hours after purchasing the live stream. We will be providing information after that live stream uh, about how folks could access it after the fact. Seeing you live, how do we catch you? We are very much hoping to return to live performances with an audience uh, either this December, if vaccination rates allow, or potentially next spring in May of 2022. We're confident we'll be able to have our big 20th anniversary concert uh, with a large in-person audience by then. But it is our hope that by December of this year, we'll be able to have our traditional annual holiday concert uh, with all of our choristers present and an audience. What about the kids whose career would have or or whose tenure would have ended this year? Will there be a special for farewell or anything like that? Well, I think that the kids whose tenure is ending this year, they've really had a very unique experience. And they've certainly had an opportunity to continue the music making uh, and participate in the Wilmington Children's Chorus in a very unique way. Uh, but of course, every year we celebrate our seniors with a special senior ceremony and recognize their commitments through the years. Uh, so we will be able to do that this year. And last year, we actually went around and visited each of their houses uh, and did our special senior ceremony outdoors. Uh, so they came outside uh, and we presented them with their senior recognition ceremony in that manner in order to stay safe. Uh, and the folks who graduated last year, I think, are the ones who had their experience most disrupted, but they also got to see how we could creatively adapt to the times uh, and found unique ways to get through this time together. Uh, when COVID was kind of developing uh, and as we saw uh, the murder of George Floyd, we had special uh, 
get togethers on Zoom for our kids to uh, kind of have an open house, uh, an open forum to talk about their feelings, to talk about the challenges uh, and their pain. And that was a really important opportunity, not only for all of our students, but for our seniors to show that leadership and to communicate, you know, these times might be hard. We've gone through a lot with the Wilmington Children's Chorus, and it has taught us uh, how to be leaders, how to uh, stick it out in times of challenge. Uh, and those seniors have been able to show that throughout this process. Uh, and we're so incredibly grateful to the leadership of our seniors and our upperclassmen, uh, showing all of us how we can get through these difficult times. We are actually out of time. Take us home by talking about how do we get involved with the chorus? Free tuition, you've got to pay for that somehow. Um, how do we support your efforts? Absolutely. We are always so grateful for every donation, every dollar that comes through our door. And we're very well supported by our community. We have folks who give $5 when they can, and we have folks who give $5,000 when they can. And every dollar truly makes a difference in our choristers' lives. If you're interested in supporting the work of the Wilmington Children's Chorus, there are so many things that you can do. You can join us for our events, our documentary premiere, our concert. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram and on YouTube to stay up to date with what we're doing and to share the incredible work uh, with your friends and family and your community. You can help us spread the news about our auditions and our summer camp and all of the opportunities that we have to folks who have kids who love to sing and would be interested in these opportunities. Uh, and you can support us with a donation if you're able um, and you're excited about the work that we're doing. And you can find all of this information on our website at WilmingtonChildrensChorus.org. Uh, Kimberly, parting words? I just hope that a lot of folks will come out and join the Wilmington Children's Chorus. And as things resume, hopefully some sense of normalcy uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, we'd love to see you out at performance. Uh, as our kids' voices get to be shared with the community and help us heal throughout this process. Find information about everything we talked about today at WilmingtonChildrensChorus.org. You'll find out information about how you can support them, auditions, the summer camp, and of course, And Still We Sing, the big premiere coming up on May 22nd, 7 p.m. You can attend in person, see them walk the red carpet, or you can live stream it as well. Information about tickets and the live stream, again, WilmingtonChildrensChorus.org. Follow them on social media and check out their YouTube channel to see past performances and more information about all of the activities that you'll find with the Wilmington Children's Chorus. And uh, my guest today, the Executive Director, Leanna McGurr, and Kimberly Doucette. She is the Artistic Director. Once again, WilmingtonChildrensChorus.org. Ladies, thank you for being on today. Thank you for having us. I'm Laura Lewis. This has been Focus on the Delaware. Valley. Community, 